everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to Imagination Tech. So today I wanted to show you this quad, which is a seven inch long range cruiser that I built. And this is officially the largest drone in my fleet. Now um, I'm going to be taking you on the step-by-step -step build process on how I built this, as well as some videos at the end of this thing in flight. Now, if you're subscribed to this channel, you might have seen my unboxing video of some MEPS parts that I received um, back in November, and I made that video in December. Um, and we are going to be using some of those uh, parts here in uh, this build. MEPS King sent me these motors, the FC and the ESC for free. I did not have to purchase it, but they did not pay me to make this video. No one had pre-approved what I'm going to say. In fact, they sent me these parts back in November. So normally, if you have a contract, they were required to make a video in two weeks and it's already January so almost end of January so we're closing into three months already and if you stay tuned till the end you might uh, watch something that maps might not be 100% happy about <laughs> all right stay tuned So this is the framework we're going to be using for our 7-inch build. You can notice the really lo long arms with a relatively small uh, fuselage. And the way these things go with, uh, with a lot of 7-inch frames is that they just take the fuselage or the main body from their 5-inch uh, build or their 5-inch frame design and they just slap on longer arms. And it's also how this is with this frame, it has, um, it has a typical... Um, five inch mini quad fuselage or, or main main body but it has these arms that can handle a seven inch props um, so I've already pre-assembled this we're just going to take off the top plate and um, not going to be discussing much about uh, this uh, this frame because you might be using a different frame and it, it doesn't really matter it's um, mo most of these frames are pretty similar anyway um, it's just they would just differ in how they are assembled but um, you can take any 7 inch uh, frame that you want and still follow along with this build all right now we've taken off the top plate you will notice that here on the center as with most frames for 5 inch or for 6 inch for, or for 7 inch your typical frame will would have uh, you know screws or holes at least that are configured, configured something like this these are 30 by 30 or rather 30.5 by 30.5 um, hole patterns so there's a uh, 30.5 millimeters um, distance between all of these screws there's also a smaller hole pattern in case you want to put a smaller flag controller or stack here these are for a 20 by 20 stack and there's also a 20 by 20 stack here at the back so in case you want to mount your um, uh, maybe a VTX that has a 20 by 20 mount or you can even put a mini 20 by 20 stack here at the back so this is the stack that we are going to be putting on the 7-inch build. This is the MEPS Space SZ 60-amp uh, 4-in-1 ESC. And this is the MEPS um, F7 HD flight controller. Both are from MEPS King. And I discussed this briefly in my uh, unboxing video of these uh, products. So do check that out. I'll link to that in the description as well as put a card up here in the corner. So right now, the first thing we have to do is uh, we'll, we'll take off this wire harness first. And then the first thing we need to do is to put the gummies here on the stack. So this flight controller and ESC came with all of these uh, accessories. You have your wire harnesses, you have your gummies and the capacitor. Even the pigtail came with the ESC as uh, is pretty much standard with, uh, with electronics for FPV these days. And there's also this wire harness which connects your FC to your, your flight controller to your ESC. And I just soldered on this, uh, this pigtail quickly. It, it's not a very good job, but I, I just wanted to test it out in beta flight, make sure that everything is working. So I'll just remove this pigtail quickly and we'll put it back later on. So included in the package is uh, five of each of these uh, gummies. You have these taller ones and these short ones. Now, if you notice in our frame, it's already elevated by these um, by these lock nuts. So we're going to go with the shorter ones, but ultimately that's going to be a decision that I will leave up to you. But we don't need the taller ones because that'll put, um, 
too much space in between. So just, just to illustrate, you can see that's where our, our board is going to go. And if we use the short one, it's going to be much lower. And you have to um, consider we also have to have our flight controller up on top. So if you've, if you've ever built uh, a drone before, you'd probably be already familiar with uh, how to install these gummies. It's never a, it's never a, a pleasurable thing for to do, but uh, it is doable, especially when you, once you get the hang of it. So that's how I do it. I just squeeze it and then just push and pull. A lot of, a lot of electronics uh, do come already with these uh, gummies pre-installed. And um, that's very much uh, appreciated. So with the SpeedyB, um, it already comes with a set of these gummies pre-installed. But again, um, pro they probably left that out with this one because you have a choice of using a short or, sh a short or tall gummy. We'll just finish up the rest of this as well as on the, on the flight controller. So I've got the small gummies installed on the ESC and I've got the taller gummies here on the flight controller. I got them all from the, from the Ziploc bag of the ESC because they are identical anyway. Uh, they are the same exact same gummies, but I just didn't want to uh, open that up yet. I mean, it's already open, but I wanted to use the ones I got from the ESC first. So the layout of the wiring connector is uh, indicated here on the sales screen underneath the uh, the ESC. So we'll just uh, follow along. Use the use this as a guide. So you have your your negative, positive uh, motors one, two, three, and four. Um, I guess that's your current uh, meter, and then uh, ESC telemetry up on the last. And you will notice that on our flight controller, it is exactly the same order. It's minus plus one, two, three, four current uh, current meter and um, R4 I believe it says it just means that your your R4 is going to be used for ESC telemetry so we just plug that in and that's basically it now we just need to install this here and then install our stack up on top now if you're using a different uh, flight controller or ESC combination um, that there, that, you know, there's plenty of um, wires here. You have a harness here where the connector is already uh, pre-installed on one side, but uh, you have your extra connectors here, so you can just you know switch these wires around to suit you whatever ESC or flight controller you are going to be connecting to. So first things first, we're going to be pre-tinning all of these uh, pads that we are going to be using, starting with these ESCs as well as the power pad. So I mentioned this in my unboxing and you can see that there are quite a number of pads on our flight controller. So like I mentioned in my previous unboxing video, you have a lot of pads here in your flight controller. You have UART 2 over here, you have uh, UART 4, you have UART 3 and UART 5. Now we are going to be putting a GPS uh, unit on this because this is going to be for long range. So we are probably going to put it here on UART 5 with 5 volts in ground right beside it. And if you do uh, plan on using uh, something with a compass like a BN880 or a BE880, you also have SEL here and SDA. So either you, are, you can put it here on either UART 5 or UART 3. But we're going to be using UART 5 because UART 3, we're going to be using for our crossfire. Or if you have ELRS, you can uh, hook that up here as well. And we are also going to be putting our beeper up here on top. You have your buzz negative, which is the signal uh, wire going to your uh, buzzer. You have your 5 volts, which is the red wire and the ground for the black wire. Now, um, since this is a digital flight controller, it has this connector um, for your uh, air unit or your Vista, or in our, in our case, we're going to be putting an, a walk snail avatar VTX on this. And this, this connector has 10 volts ground, um, UART1, and there's also two other pins, ground and R2, but we are only concerned about the first four pins, 10 volts, 10 volts and ground to power our um, Avatar VTX and UART1. Included with the flight controller is this uh, six pin harness. So um, again, we are just interesting, interested in the first four wires and we're going to be probably removing these two wires. And then we're going to connect these wires and uh, to our uh, Avatar VTX. 
now that we've soldered all our pads we are just going to put this aside for a bit and uh, here I have my um, avatar HD VTX and um, if you have a Cadex Vista then you would put it here as well uh, the whole pattern on the frame is 16 by 16 uh, so we, we are not going to be able to screw this on because this is a 20 by 20 hole pattern um, but what we are going to do is we can probably just zip tie that I've already installed the TPU and uh, the antennas as well and it, it took a bit of wiggling but I was finally able to um, you know push all of the slack inside we'll just tighten that up with zip ties and we're also going to put our uh, GPS here now unlike uh, with most analog systems where the camera is wired directly to the flight controller and the VTX is also wired to the flight controller with a digital system you would most likely have your camera wire going directly to your VTX and that's why we're going to put this wire underneath our VTX and that's why we removed it so we are just going to put this back on and put our flight controller back on there as well all right so we've pretty much um, all of the major components are right here we're also going to be adding our GPX GPS unit over here and we're gonna figure out the wiring in a little bit and uh, for our for our um, crossfire receiver we are going to be mounting it here because this is for long range I want the antenna to be mounted vertically and um, so we're going to have to remove the antennas the antenna of the crossfire receiver when we're not flying but when it's flying it's going to be a vertical position where and that'll give us a better range with this uh, with this drone next we'll just tin the ends of these uh, of these wires now we can solder in each of the wires take note for this GPS unit the wire beside the, the beside ground is the one that goes to RX and the other wire goes to TX and we give this wire a twist okay now we just slide this in here connect our GPS unit now we do the same thing for our crossfire receiver so Waxnail VTX has come with their own connector that plugs into the VTX, but the other way, other end are just uh, wires which you would need to solder onto something on the flight controller. Unfortunately, uh, the one downside to this MEPS flight controller is that there are no pads for the digital input uh, connector. So that would be fine if you just need uh, you know a spare UART, but you also need at least six volts. For, to power your walk snail VTX and also your Cadex Vista and the 10 volt connector here 10 volt pad well there is there is no 10 volt pad so it's just the connector or nothing else so luckily the flight controller came with this wire and originally these this end that you see here uh, this was uh, connected to this connector and I just used a box cutter to lift off the lock tabs in the plastic to remove uh, to remove these uh, these connectors and now I can just plug these right in to this connector after I remove all of these wires first so you just need to lift off these tabs and once that's lifted you can pull the wire right out we're just going to be doing that for all four wires but we are going to need to keep these connector um, safe and sound and in good condition now that I removed the wires from this connector, I just need to put the wires back in in the correct order. So we'll start with the positive first. So now we have a wire harness that connects to our flight controller as well as our walk snail uh, VTX. So we connect it here. And the other one plugs into the flight controller, but the, let's twist this first. All right. So we're just trying to fit everything first we're not going to keep this all permanent because we still need to solder in our pigtail later as well as our motors but I think right now we have most of our parts laid out uh, in our frame and we'll probably want to zip tie this uh, these antennas as well so that they don't keep moving this ESC came with this uh, 470 microfarad capacitor it's, and it goes up to 35 volts I'm not sure if that's visible 
Um, so yeah, um, I would have preferred something like a thousand microfarads for this size ESC, but uh, it's not really a problem and we don't have a lot of space inside. So what I like to do is to wrap the legs of my capacitor with some heat shrink, just leaving the, the last part uh, exposed. And now I just need to slot these uh, legs into the holes that are specific for the capacitor. And you have to take note that uh, this capacitor has a polarity. So you take note which side you insert through the negative pad. So I'm just going to solder on this side to secure these uh, the legs of the capacitor. Now that we've soldered on our pigtail, I'm just twisting these wires. Uh, this wire harness for the between the ESC and the FC. So I'm just going to plug it in there. And for our crossfire receiver, I'm also going to just slide it in here and snap it into place. So it's probably just going to bend a little bit and then I'll put some sticky tape underneath here or maybe something like this and our VTX wire harness also goes in here finally we can install the motors on the arms and we would just need to place this here and then use the included um, screws that came with the, with the motors on uh, on the underside now, a lot of motor manufacturers these days already have a uh, thread locker pre-applied onto their uh, screws. And you would see that because there was a, a color blue on that. But uh, these uh, screws from MEPS looks like it came straight from a factory. And so we are going to be applying our own um, thread locker. So considering they're a premium motor, I would have preferred that the, it already comes, you know, with, uh, with some thread locker pre-applied. But you only need a, a small bit and you will just thread this in to your motor and get your screwdriver or hex driver and we're not going to tighten it just yet we want to install all of the all of, all of the screws first so once you have all four screws in you just need to you know tighten them in a diagonal pattern just as you would with your car lugs. And now we just need to do the same for all of our arms. While their screws didn't have thread locker pre-applied to it, they are really nice looking screws. They are, lo looks like really good quality screws. And if this is going to be your first uh, first build or your second build, they, you know, there's a lot of things to say about Maps King, but Stingy is not one of them. They provided a lot of spares, which is more than I can say for a lot of different motor, motor manufacturers who just give you you know, maybe one screw spare, but this one, th with these motors, you get two complete set of screws for free. You know, it, it's a minor thing, but it's something I appreciate. So these motors are really meant for a large uh, multi-copter. And you can see these, uh, these are really, really long wires. I think these are more than almost a foot. Maybe these are 10 inch wires. But these are definitely more than six inches. So um, what I'd like to do is to first uh, tidy these wires up before we cut them. So we're just going to wrap it with this with this cloth tape around the arms. So this is the super simple, easiest, most basic way of uh, doing your motor wires. But uh, if you've watched some of my recent builds, I've been using these MR30 connectors so that I can easily swap out motors. And these are five inch motors. So I have a lot of them, a lot of spares. And I lost one motor. It was a quick and easy replacement, just pulled you know, I just uh, put this motor on. This was actually from another quad and I replaced the, the whole motor set of that. But for this one, this is a seven inch build. These are the only 2806 motors that I have. And I don't, and I'm not planning on, you know, having that kind of uh, hot swap ability on this. And so another way of doing this would be race wire. Or in my case, I have a lot of these wire mesh uh, lying around. So I might as well use it, mix it a little bit, you know, a little bit neater. So it really depends on your personal preference on what kind of, uh, or how you want to tidy up your arms. Now that all of my motor wires are nice and neat and also trimmed down, I am just going to add some solder onto the ends of these, uh, the ends of these motor wires. 
And once you've tinned the ends of your leads, you just need to solder it down onto the ESC. The order of the wires doesn't matter as long as you know you solder them side by side. So as a comparison, this is a SpeedyB F405 version 3 flight controller, and this is cost just around $60. So it's a pretty, um, you know, it, it, this is one of my favorite uh, flight controllers because it's, it's, it's cheap, and it also has all of these pads. Now you also have this connector for your, uh, for your ESC, just like the one on, on uh, MEPS one, but they also have, uh, you know, breakout pads underneath that con uh, connector. So, uh, again, just like the, the MEPS, uh, MEPS flight controller. But what I like about this one is that this was actually built for analog in that it has an OSD chip. So if you put an analog VTX here with an analog camera, you can use it with Betaflight. You can configure it with Betaflight and uh, display an OSD on in your display. But if you want to use it for digital, you can do that as well. There are plenty of pads here at the bottom. There's, uh, there's a breakout pad for 9 volts somewhere here i think this is the 9 volt pad which you can power your uh walk snail uh, avatar vtx or your uh dji uh cadex vista or whatever uh the hd um vtx you have through this 9 volt pad so that's one thing that the maps flight controller is lacking is that it you need to rely on their uh hd connector for plugging in your uh hd vtx but it doesn't have breakout pads for powering your VTX, so uh, that's one limitation um, of the of that flight controller. Right, so we're basically done. We've soldered all of our motor wires. I've already mounted the crossfire on top of the flight controller with some double-sided tape. The stack screws aren't, you know, as long as I'd want them to be. I the, these are the size of these these uh, the screws, and these are uh, flathead screws, and. Unfortunately, I don't have any longer screws, and th these are the ones that came with the uh, with the frame. This, these these are spare ones that I bought, but these are also the same size at 18 millimeters. So you'd probably want um, something like 20 or 22, maybe even 24 millimeter uh, screws for this, and it has to be flat head to fit in this frame. Um, so yeah, um, since I didn't have any any you know any screw left for uh, for a nut, I just used a uh, zip tie for the flight controller and I also sandwiched my uh, receiver over there so at least nothing is shaking when it's flying. Um, I also secured my uh, my um, walk snail avatar VTX with some uh, zip ties as well so there are three zip ties more than I'd prefer but um, you know I've built uh, much worse quads that you know that flew great and this is Part of uh, you know of, of know-how of how to build quads is to also figure out solutions to you know to some of these problems. Uh, our top plate, I also printed this out. This is a GoPro mount. I probably will not be putting a GoPro on this, uh, especially for long-range flights. But you never know. So I so this is a really nice mount that I found on Thingiverse. It has this lock uh, here at the bottom, and you can also screw it on top. You, you should you will also screw it on top. Um, so this vertical crossfire antenna mount, this vertical T, uh, Immortal T mount, um, I had to also cut some of the plastic and some, melt some of the plastic so that the camera plate would fit because this was a little bit too thick. Um, so yeah, again, um, you have, you just have to find solutions to some of the problems you might encounter during the build. So we are basically done. We're just going to cover this up, put our battery, uh, our, we're going to stick our battery pad here so that our battery doesn't slip off during flight. One last thing is we are going to be using this these uh, Jamfan Long Range 7035 by blade props, and these are really 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 long. And this is what we're going to be putting here. And you can see that there's actually a lot of still a lot of space um, on on these arms. You could probably put an eight inch uh, prop here. It would still fit. All right, so now we connect our quad to Betaflight, and uh, the default firmware here is 4.3.1. Um, you can upgrade your firmware to 4.4, and uh, yeah, maybe we, we can do that. We chose to auto detect the um, the board, and it says it's a T Motor F7 uh, target with a 4.4.3. Okay, so we're just gonna click load firmware online. It's gonna load the firmware file 
And once that's done, just click on Flash Firmware. Right, so once it's uh, done flashing firmware, just click on connect and then click on apply custom defaults. So there are a few warnings here. It says there's no motor output protocol set and accelerometer is not calibrated. We'll do that in a little bit. So here we have our accelerometer and we want your quad to be on a flat surface. Let me just fix this. Okay, so now it's on a flat surface. Just click on calibrate accelerometer and that's it and then i usually turn on uh you know in-flight calibration but we'll do that later on um if you remember our our uart1 is where we have our digital vtx connected so we have to turn on msp for that and then for peripherals we will choose msp plus display port now if this was an analog uh, vtx you would not be turning on msp and you would just be selecting probably uh, smart audio or IRC tramp depending on your VTX. So we, we set it up for MSP plus display port. Um, Crossfire is connected to, to UART3, so we'll turn on serial RX there. And our GPS is connected to UART5, so we'll just look for GPS. We're done here, and then we'll just click save and reboot. Okay, so next up is the configuration tab. Um, we'll keep this at default. We'll just put maps for now, map seven, right? For our map seven inch build. Okay, um, D shot beacon, RX loss, RX set. And then for arming angle, we want it to set it to 180 so that even if it's it crashes upside down, we'll be able to um, arm our quad. In flight accelerometer calibration, um, yep, I, I want to have that on. I usually have that on anyway. GPS, we already have a U-Blocks protocol already set and we will set this to auto body scale and set home point once because we only want, we don't want to arm somewhere up on the mountain. It'll reset the, the home point. And here we'll just click on auto detect and we'll just click save and reboot. Next up, we'll go to the presets tab. So here you would be looking for, um, I think walk snail. We'll just need to use this one, OST for FPV, WITF, DJI O3, Avatar HD. Map to display port, set HD OST, and then use display port MSP VTX on what, whichever UART you have your VTX connected to. In our case, it's on, uh, connected to UART 1. We'll just click on pick, and that's it. And then we'll just click save and reboot. On our receiver tab, um, I'll just turn on uh, telemetry we're already set for a crossfire here serial uh serial via uart so everything here is i'm um, just going to keep it at default we just turn on telemetry click on save and reboot on the motors tab this is where we would need to plug in our battery so when you're doing this you want to make sure that your bat your props are not uh you, you don't have your props on your motors just to keep things safe so I plug it in, no smoke, got in, getting the 4S voltage from my 4S battery that I plugged in. Let's set this to D-Shot 600. Okay, so click save and reboot. So my motors are making a sound now because we are on the right protocol. So we click, on, I understand the risks, and spinning motor one should spin this back right uh, motor, and. One or two would be the front, front right. Three is the back left and four is the front right. Okay, so everything is in order. So we don't need to, you know, uh, change the, the motor order. We just need to check the direction. So let's just click, I understand the risks. I prefer to do this manually, individually rather. So you just click and hold on one and you feel if your um, you know if your motors are spinning the right way. By the way, I prefer to do this uh, with a reverse motor direction. So this is how you are going to expect the motors to spin. So let us see even reboot that first, and then go back to motors tab, and then click on motor direction. So again, we want to feel if one is spinning the expected way like this. So two is not spinning, um, you know, 
like like this it's spinning actually counterclockwise so we'll just reverse that so now if you do that and you feel number two it's uh, spinning the right way do that again for number three and it's spinning the right way four we need to reverse so now it's spinning the right way okay so that is it for this tab we are all set and now we just need to set our OSD so here you already have your HD OSD already set here and we are just going to you know con you, you just need to configure this to however you like so here I have my default OSD that I always use uh, it's, it's what I'm used to you would configure this you know um, really depending on how uh, how you would want to set this I would turn on VTX because turn off VTX because I used to use this when I was on analog and I have three uh, OSD profiles so I normally switch between uh, you know if I want to show uh, an OSD uh, GPS uh, stats or, or not so two used to be just uh, the difference was showing the VTX um, my VTX uh, channel and power but um, pro not going to use that now because um, I'm on digital so we'll just click on save here for fail safe is another thing that we want to set so this is uh, normally set to auto the default for pitch roll pitch and yaw is hold but for throttle uh, hold means maintain last good value received so we'll keep it at that for um, for beta flight 4.3 this used to be like uh, it brings the throttle down so uh, for the 1.5 settings the 1.5 seconds that you lose signal it you know it drops your quad but uh, right now it's set to 4.4 so we'll set it we'll leave it at that uh, we want our drone to to no, no, not to land to, but to GPS rescue and to return home so um, what I would set here is the minimum distance to home it's, it's now set to default of 15 but you know the minimum is actually just supposed to be 20 the rest I'm going to leave at the default I also want to have a minimum satellite of just six um, or even five you know um, I'm not gonna take off with just five satellites anyway it's just that it gives me a buffer in case while flying and my the number of satellites drops to below eight um, you know it's not gonna uh, do a sanity, sanity check on me so um, alarm I'm arming without fix in case I want to take off even if I don't have the minimum satellites yet and the maximum altitude during that flight will be my altitude mode so if I lose GPS rescue it's going to rise up to that maximum altitude so if you're you know if you're flying up over a peak then it's gonna record that as the maximum altitude and if you drop down towards the lower on the underside of the peak and you lose signal then at least it's going to go fly up towards you know over that uh, maximum distance sanity checks on fail safe only yeah that's that's good so let's just click save and reboot now finally you just need to set your modes here this is where you would set your switches so um, uh, just like uh, OSD again this, this is just you know for according to personal preference I always still have angle mode somewhere on a switch just in case um, I'll have GPS rescue I'm not sure which mode yet but uh, beeper and turtle mode I usually put on a single uh, single switch single aux switch so that's I'll put down aux 3 so the middle would be the beeper and you know, the, the latter part would be aux uh, would be for uh, turtle mode so everything is set uh, GPS rescue would be on aux 4 and then we have aux 5 4 uh, yeah setting our OSD OSD profile right so once uh, once you've set that to your liking, you just click on save. So I just did a hover test and the motors were very, very cool, even at stock pids and need just a little bit of throttle to take off. And one change I, I did was uh, put the GPS mount on the arms as well. And this way um, we avoid any of the interference that the digital VTX is very notorious for. It doesn't matter if it's a walk snail or a DJI 
uh, VTX, it's going to mm, you know mess up with your GPS. But here, I'm getting really, really good satellites. So I think that this was the right choice instead of mounting it here at the back underneath that antenna and having the wires go over that uh, walk snail vtx another thing i put here was the beeper unit as you can see here i just mounted it on the on a pigtail which which works fine um, at least it's it, i secured it with some zip ties and th these two combined will make sure that um, you know even in the case of a crash somewhere out there i'll increase at least the chance of recovering my quad i have a whole video of how to make sure that you get your quad back after flying so do check that out all right so we're here now at green valley we're just going to give this seven inch maps build a test flight so here it is on its maiden flight and the first thing you'll notice is i took off at around 17 percent throttle and just cruising at around you know between 17 and 20 percent occasionally blipping it to 22 or 24 percent throttle but yeah you're you're going to be able to cruise on this thing at really really low throttles which is great for efficiency and great for long range um, and that's because it's very, very light. It's around 472.5 uh, grams, which is just as light as my other other quads, other five inch quads. Um, even my Freland Y6 just weighs around that thing. And this one has the added advantage of having those big beefy motors and those long seven inch props. So it's going to be really, really good on uh, your battery and you can really fly a long time with this thing. Now, uh, this thing has uh, currently has a, a 1300 milliamp hour uh, 6s pack on this uh, flight and you can see uh, i didn't take off at full battery it took took off around 24 volts and uh we've, we've flown for just uh you know just a minute and um so i'm just going to be flying you know around this place um i i flew a little bit of uh freestyle not not really aggressively but um you know i, I did some split s's some power loops stuff like that just to see the capability of this thing and this thing is really really smooth on these stock pids but it is also capable of doing some um, a little bit of freestyle tricks and you can handle it without even you know a lot of uh, uh, prop wash at this point i've already flown for more than seven minutes and the battery is down to 21.5 volts and while i haven't been really crazy doing doing some crazy freestyle moves with this thing um, I also wasn't just uh, merely cruising around or hovering. I was trying to fly, uh, you know, trying to push this thing, really trying to drain the battery is what I was really trying to do here because it's, it was staying at around 22 volts and now it's just at 21.5 volts. But this is going on for around more than nine and a half minutes before I have had to lay this thing down. So it's really, really efficient on, uh, on the battery, especially since um you know um, it's going to be met as a long range uh cruiser and uh, again i didn't even start with the full battery it's, i took off around uh at, at around 24 volts and right now it's you know it it won't go below 21.5 volts even if i'm trying to really drain this battery so yeah uh this is really really efficient in terms of battery so this is really really going to be great for long range which is what what this build was really meant for it is still capable of uh, doing freestyle if you want to freestyle with a seven inch, but uh, probably not a good idea. But I mean, you can if you want to, but yeah. So I was testing the GPS rescue on this and I accidentally disarmed from 30 meters up in the air as it was doing its uh, return to home. And it actually held up pretty well. It hit the roof there before bouncing off that other green roof on the other side and then eventually bouncing to the concrete floor. So all things considered, this thing pretty much took a beating without, you know, without taking much damage and just smiling through it. Okay, so let's put another pack in. I think it was the battery that took much of the beating though. Um, it's a little bent. And I'm not sure if this thing would still hold the charge, but uh, yeah, we'll take this home and see if we can still use this thing. So unfortunately, that was the last flight I had with this 7-inch long-range cruiser today. Um, when I plugged in the battery, it did not turn on. The ESC turned on. I could, I could hear the motors, but the ESC was not powering on. So I plugged it into beta flight. It was still functional. 
so that means the voltage regulator on the flight controller wasn't working it wasn't providing power to any of the peripherals like the the vtx or the uh the gps and the, and the receiver unfortunately uh i i can't really say that it's the fault of the flight controller because it was a really really hard crash i fell from a high distance it hit two roofs and the concrete so that might have been uh, the cause for the damage now if you are handy uh, you have a you know a good soldering workstation maybe a reflow station and uh, some some mag magnifying glass you might be able to replace the um, the voltage regulator on this but uh, for me i have i'll just have to send this over to to andy um, and then uh, for the meantime probably put a speedy b flight controller on this one i have a spare one lying around so uh but yeah everything else the esc i tested it on beta flight the esc was working fine the motors were running fine we were still spinning so this is going to be a quick uh, repair for me i'm just gonna do a quick swap of the flight controller and this is going to be airborne unfortunately i wasn't able to fly this long range yet but it flew for 10 minutes on a 6s 1300 milliamp hour pack so that is quite impressive for uh for something that really was intended for a long range if I could fly that on a 1300 milliamp hour pack, imagine what I could do with a, let's say a 21700 molly cell pack with uh, 4000 milliamp hours. So that's going to be our next step is to try to fly this really, really long range. Now it should, that uh, other battery pack should last us maybe 20 minutes and we can really get some uh, really long range with this thing. Now, even if this is for a long range, it was really, really, it felt really, really light on the sticks, um, but that was a very, very light battery. So um, I think it will be just fine with a with a 6S uh, 21700 pack, um, even with uh, with twice the weight, because uh, I think I was cruising at around 20% throttle, maybe less. I'll have to check the OSD, but I, I just ha I, you just have to put in a little bit of throttle, and it's it's going to be airborne. So if you're just going to go for range or going to go for cruising, you don't really, really need a lot of throttle. And the this train one seven hundred is going to give you a lot of lot of range for this thing. Um, so yeah, it, it really does uh, actually f quite floaty actually in 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 the air because of probably because of the seven inch props provides lots of lots of thrust, lots of uh, authority in the air. So ev I was not really expecting you know a lot, but uh, it's actually flew quite smoothly um, even on the stock bids. So I'm going to uh, leave you with some more of, uh, of the DVR footage or the, uh, from the walk snail and let you be the judge of, uh, of how this thing performs. All right, so I'm going to be leaving you with that um, and I'm going to get on with the repair so that I can use this for a long range mission tomorrow. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and also make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. All right, and if you enjoyed this video and found it informative, found it useful, um, maybe considering send me a coffee or a patreon the, the links are down below in the description all the parts that I used here the map swans as well as the the TBS receiver or the walk snail and everything else that I got that is not for maps king is also going to be in the description below as well as uh, all of the 3d printed parts so do check that out so as always keep building and keep flying gotta go ahead and repair this thing <laughs>